Welcome to the lab. I'm Drew Collip. In today's lab, we're going to continue our milk analysis series, analyzing the level of carbohydrates in different milk and milk products with Benedict's test. Half a mil of each sample was added into these test tubes. One mil of Benedict's solution was added to each. Water is being used as our negative control, and we have three positive controls, glucose, lactose, and starch. We will use a beaker of water on a hot plate to heat the samples for two minutes. Benedict's reagent will then react with the carbohydrates, primarily the monosaccharides, in each of the samples and produce a color change. Blue indicates there is no carbohydrates. Green indicates there is a low level of carbohydrates. Orange indicates a moderate level of carbohydrates. And red indicates a high level of carbohydrates. Take note, by heating the sample, the disaccharides and the polysaccharides may break down into monosaccharides. I will show you this as I heat just the controls at the beginning of this experiment. Here we have a beaker on a hot plate and the water is boiling. Take note, I've put boiling chips in the bottom of the water bath. I will now just take the controls and heat them and we can watch what happens. When looking at the tubes, from left to right we have the negative control, the water, followed by lactose, then glucose, then starch. What you should see is the glucose starts changing immediately. And over time, the lactose begins to change as the disaccharide is broken down into monosaccharides. And you can see the glucose is already starting to change. It's starting to turn green. Green indicates a low amount of carbohydrates. As we continue to heat, you can see the green is turning into more of an orange color. And you might notice that the lactose is now turning a slight green color. Our Negative control and our starch appear to have no change at all. The glucose is now turning an orange-red color, and you can see the lactose is starting to turn a bit of an orange-green color. The glucose is now turning more red, and the lactose looks more of a, a dirty green orange color. No reaction from the negative control, and I don't see any reaction from the starch. Again, the glucose is now turning bright red, indicating a high amount of carbohydrates. And the lactose, as it continues to boil, is slowly becoming more red. Once again, green means low level of carbohydrates, orange means a moderate level of carbohydrates, and red means a high level of carbohydrates. Blue means no carbohydrates. Clearly, the heating process is breaking down our disaccharide, lactose, into its monosaccharides. This is then reacting with Benedict's reagent. The glucose is now bright red, and the lactose is becoming more red as we continue to heat it. At two minutes, I'll remove the test tubes and place them into an ice bath to stop the heating process. If you don't do this, the water will continue to heat the samples. I will now heat all of the samples separately. I will do this for the same amount of time, a total of two minutes. Try and add the test tubes in all at the same time, so that each sample is heated for the same duration. Also remember, don't drop the tubes inside. A test tube may break, causing a contamination of your beaker of water. Well, watch this change as well. I will apologize beforehand, my camera ran out of memory, so I did not capture the full two minutes. I'll show you what I did get. Again, blue means no carbohydrates, green means a small amount, orange means a moderate amount, and red means a high amount of carbohydrates. And hopefully you notice, it is starting to turn green already. I see some turning orange now, 
and some remain the blue color. Unfortunately, my memory card was full at this moment. Here are the samples, all after two minutes of heating and then several minutes of cooling in the ice water. If you look at our negative control, it does not appear to show any carbohydrates as expected. Our glucose appears to be bright red as expected and our lactose also appears to be bright red. By heating the lactose, it broke down from a disaccharide into monosaccharides, and then this reacted with Benedict's reagent to create this high carbohydrate level, the red color. Our starch does not appear to have any carbohydrates at all, indicating that the heating did not break down that polysaccharide. That being stated, if you look very closely on the bottom, we can see a little bit of color change. So perhaps at the bottom, there was a slight amount of breaking down of our polysaccharide into monosaccharides. I see a small amount of green there. Perhaps you see it as well. If we look closer at our glucose, clearly it has a high amount of carbohydrates as expected, bright red. And our lactose, it's hard to distinguish it between the glucose. I would now like you to make your observations for each of these samples. Recall, blue means there's no carbohydrates, green represents a low level of carbohydrates, orange represents a moderate level of carbohydrates, and finally, red represents a high level of carbohydrates. So make your observations about the relative level of carbohydrates between the different samples. This is our final video in the milk analysis series. By analyzing different milk and milk products, looking at the different levels of lipids, of proteins, of polysaccharides, and monosaccharides, we can compare this to the nutritional fact label on the side of these milk and milk products to attempt to identify specifically what products they are or what type of product they might be. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. Until next time.